My name is Muma Waliam Nansangu, and I am employed by the Citizens Economic Empowerment Commission in Zambia, um, an organization that is responsible for the provision of um, broad-based empowerment uh, to the citizens. As a business development manager at the Commission, I am responsible for facilitating market linkages, um, fostering broad-based uh, empowerment through uh, the implementation of various empowerment measures, and also for the oversight of the implementation of the Value Chain Development Program here in Zambia. In 2017, um, I undertook a short course in agribusiness at the University of Queensland and this was in two parts. The first part was in Australia and then we had an in Africa component uh, in Ghana. Um, the course really is complementing the efforts that the Zambian government uh, is doing with regards value chain development and uh, this is because the government has developed a strategy which is the rural industrialization and job creation strategy uh, where basically they're trying to promote uh, value chain development in the rural areas and so having undertaken this course uh, really did provide insight on uh, how we can improve the implementation of the value chain by really taking a study of the entire value chain from the farmer all the way up to the consumer and understanding that which is important uh, for the consumer and what it is they're willing to pay more for. As part of the Value Chain Development Program, um, the Citizens Economic Empowerment Commission has prioritized uh, the most competitive and comparative uh, commodity in a district. And so groundnuts actually was chosen as uh, the product for Petaoke district and Mungu districts. And so um, the commission has actually provided investment in the area of groundnuts for the two districts. And so I, I felt that um, uh, going through and trying to understand some of the challenges uh, that the value chain is going through would um, uh, bring to light and uh, enable us better understand how it is that we can uh, support this value chain and enhance its performance. Most of the times it's quite effective because when we, we, we have our sales team that has direct contact with the buyers. So when the buyers communicate and indicate that um, we're not delivering, we then hold the merchandise accountable to say, how come you never reported of these talk outs? ShopRite has your strike rate on the, on the price tag. So you can actually go and see how your competitors are performing against yourselves and you try to investigate to find out why is maybe fresh pig selling better than us and we're not getting that feedback from our merchandisers and all that. So we're trying to analyze information. The downside is on the market. We still struggle to find, you know, like how you can measure your market share against your competitors. I don't think we have a central point where we can measure that because that will also help us to hold the merchandisers accountable because right now we do rely on them greatly. One of the key measures that we took was to educate our farmers in terms of building their capacity to understand how this aflatoxin gets to the peanut. The way in which it was transmitted is a way of handling because previously our farmers would be able to sprinkle water and then start sharing the nuts, which was one of the key drivers in terms of creating the presence of these afla uh, toxin within the nuts. So one way to mitigate that was that Comaco opted to come up with a measure in which we are encouraging our farmers to be selling nuts which are fully uh, grown and nuts which have not been shelled. So we invested heavily in what we call shellers that were automated and we are going back to the farmers to buy nuts that have not been shelled primarily because we did not want to actually allow our farmers to become agents of transmitting these bacteria or this fungal to the product. So the process that we have undertaken in ensuring that we buy shared groundnuts, we minimize the level of handling at the sharing process is one key element that has seen us to have succeeded in addressing and ensuring that we maintain uh, the Zambian standard of 10 parts per billion in our peanut butter product. When buying peanut butter, I look at the color. Um, if you see the different colors between the two, the other one looks like the groundnuts were really, in the production of the groundnuts, were a little bit darker, and then the other one was a little bit lighter. 
So my kids prefer peanut butter most of the time. So we usually buy because of the color, the texture, and the quality, how it comes out when you cook the porridge for them. I also look for nutrition context in it because it's so healthy for the kids as well. And mostly you also look at the expiring date. It's important to look at the expiring date for the peanut butter. Once the brand like this one, the way it came on the market, once it announces itself on the market, the first thing that the customer will check for is, is the quality of the stock. One, being local, it will sell more compared to the imported products. Because at the moment as it is now, we, we used to sell more of imported peanut butter, but now we're selling more of the Zambian. Because one, I think even just by looking at this, they've got the packaging right, it's sealed, the brand is, is clear, you can read through. I mean, it's the number one seller in peanut butter. You get us of a price. I mean, there are so many different prices, but people just love to buy this peanut butter. I appreciate the efforts by the University of Queensland in developing and implementing the course with such excellence and to DFAT for facilitating the Australia Awards Africa to help many professionals like me make a difference in the continent through knowledge transfer. Now I have understood the value of producer and consumer conversations in strengthening this value chain.